pull up a chair and set a spell here on this very special episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, the vlogcast that reminds you to always know where your towel is. And I'm your host, Bill Stone. Well, this last Saturday evening, I had the opportunity to phone in to the Mindless Entertainment's 12-hour live stream marathon. Mindless Entertainment is hosted by Jessie Milestone, a woman whose content I very much enjoy and strongly recommend. Jessie does reviews and commentary on Star Wars and other science fiction and TV and movies, and she also does general sociopolitical commentary, often on a segment that she calls Meant to Offend. And so if you're offended, good. And if you know my own sociopolitical commentary, this is a sentiment that I can often share. Additionally, she's a frequent host on Geeks and Gamers, as well as being an actress and an accomplished fencer and fencing coach. Her opinions on science fiction generally mirror mine, and her Saturday 12-hour live stream this last weekend was a charity stream. It was to raise money for Running for Premature Babies. This is a charity that provides funding for premature and critically ill babies, giving them a much better chance for survival. I can certainly recommend this charity and definitely suggest that you donate both your time and your money to this very worthy cause. Joining Jesse during my phone call was Kelly of the channel Nerdbite. So I invite you to watch the full live stream, subscribe to Jesse's channel, Mindless Entertainment, subscribe to Kelly's channel, Nerdbite, and support the charity Running for Premature Babies. And so, without any further ado, my phone call to Jesse Milestone of Mindless Entertainment. First one, and calling. Is that a jackalope? I think it is a jackalope. I see a jackalope. Are you a jackalope, my friend? Oh, hello. Hello, lady. Hello, William. Welcome, 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 welcome to uh, to the live stream, to the twelve hour live stream. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Glad to wow. have you. Yes, that is a jackalope. That is a Dakota jackalope. Awesome, a Dakota yeah. jackalope. Did you take that photograph yourself? Hmm. No, that actually comes off of a uh, a, 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 a card that you can get at Wall Drug. <laughs> Wall Drug, nice. I love Wall Drug. I've been to Wall Drug. What a wonderful place. Uh, it's a big ass tourist trap during the. Uh, of course the summer. it is. Oh, 100% of the time. But it's funny as fuck. It's the only thing that keeps you alive driving through South Dakota. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. I uh, oh, I was born in South Dakota. And mm. uh, that I 90, um, yeah, I'm really glad that they raised the speed limit there to 80. Hell yeah. Uh, prior to that, uh, that, that road is my personal Audubon. So. <laughs> I would drive at any speed whatsoever on that road. Nice. Where do you live so, now? Um, well, I was born in South Dakota, raised in Nebraska, spent about 10 years in Chicagoland, and uh, I'm back here in the right now in beautiful midtown Lincoln, Nebraska, a city of about oh. 250,000. Nebraska, so, how about that? That is one of the, the 10... Is Nebraska Sorry. is one of the 10 states in the union I have yet to visit. I'm Jesse. I've been to 40 states out of 50, mm -hmm. and I'm now traveling the globe. Cool. That's awesome. I've been a bit up into Canada. Well, quite a lot of them, but into uh, Toronto, but not uh, not much down in Mexico. Not down to, uh, not down to Tijuana just long, enough, uh, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Mm -hmm. Do you know that they were selling at that time a whole lot of parts and heads just across the board? Really? Yeah, oh. it was a long time ago. I was on my honeymoon. I'm a bit older than you might imagine. I'm older than anyone that's called in. Oh. When I talk about Star Wars, I am so old that I saw Star Wars, the first one, when I was 12 years old. And uh, I saw that film. It, I'll never forget this. I saw that film in a theater that sat 1,000 people at least. And it was on a CinemaScope screen. Do you know what CinemaScope was? I do, yeah. Yeah, CinemaScope screen. And because it was so packed, I wound up sitting front row center. And oh Ow. my God, it was better than IMAX. The, the, the vertical side filled my field of view. Wow. And because it was a curved screen, it filled my field of view all the way around my peripheral vision. Wow. It was fracking amazing. I have fracking, yes, fracking. I oh yeah. Well, I'm an, I I come from well back. I use all of my see what you found out. 
when you were growing up when I did was that if you used totally fictional curse words, <laughs> the people couldn't get you for anything, but everybody knew what the hell you meant. You know, if you said, well, frack you, you know, some kids would go, what? Well, I know, what the, well, you're just actually telling me, well, no. And the teacher would be like, um, well, he didn't actually curse. <laughs> so, you there know. you go. But no, I've been watching Star Wars my whole life. I was the uh, primary audience when I first saw it in uh, 1977, 12 years old. That's amazing. I, uh, it's, it's one of those deals uh, because it was CinemaScope and because of where I was, it's just an absolutely unforgettable experience. Plus, it was an audience of a thousand. It was totally packed. And, you know, at that time, it was so new and everybody was going and it was just a lot of screaming and, you know, huge audience reaction because it was so different from anything else that had come on the screen. It was an amazing experience. I have, um, I have sadly now kind of said to myself, I don't think we've had a really good Star Wars movie since Empire. You know, yeah. <laughs> it kind of peaked there for me. I, I thought you know, that it was okay as a way to, um, you know, end out the series. Yeah. Uh, that, but but not as good as Empire. And then we get into the prequels and, well, uh, mm. and then The Last Jedi. Yeah. The Last Jedi, I made a mistake of going to see that in 3D. IMAX, and I sat about in the middle of the theater where it looked good, and I walked out of there because of the way the thing was shot. I walked out of there with with a it was a really strange frame of mind. To begin with, I wasn't sure whether I'd seen anything that was any good or not because I was seeing it in you know this big IMAX. Screen oh, it's so it. visually beautiful. Well, yeah, it was, but the weird thing was, I walked out in a, in a very strange state of mind because of it. I don't know why. Um, but I, I walked out and I'm like, okay, did I see something good or not? Because I'm just not mm -hmm. quite sure what the hell I just saw. Wow. And uh, and then after I, I'm sorry. I was say, when you live in Los Angeles long enough, you get used to that. You're like, wow, that was stunningly beautiful. And there's absolutely nothing behind it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I walked out. Avatar. And, Do I even know what happened in this film? You know, it was like, what the heck? Absolutely. So after I got a chance to kind of, you know, cope with it, I went, you know, that kind of sucks. <laughs> and I was really displeased with what they did with Luke. And watching, you know, watching um, uh, Mark Hamill, you know, going around at the press junkets, right? And and the guy, it, it just blew my mind because the guy is like, well, I didn't agree with anything that Ryan Johnson did with my character. And he would end it right there. And, and you know, most actors will say, I didn't like anything that he did with my character, but I decided to do the best job I could. And yeah. just stopped it there and he went, oh, okay, that's what he thinks. You know? And he looked, he looked depressed half the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, but in terms of Star Wars, man, I've been watching it my whole life now. You know, it's uh, it's one of those deals where prequel trilogies, I mean, see, the original trilogy, because that's what I first saw really sticks with you. Yeah. And so, it's, it's one of the different, I'm, I'm sort of sorry, you know, yeah. that people today can't see that sort of thing, you yeah, know, where you're sitting in a huge theater with this giant screen. You know? Yeah, like, I went oh, to I a agree. few, um, I went to a few, like, throwback Thursdays at theaters, but Star Wars was yeah. never on that docket because oh. it would be too much. Like, no. it would be too much for the rights of the theater, even with all the people they'd get to so sell out so quickly. For me, what I, what I will say, the only good thing about the Star Wars special editions was um, that just, that hit my generation perfectly as the only opportunity I had to see the original or as close to it as you can get uh, Star yeah. Wars movies in the theater. Um, and There's that a guy was, out there who has... It's sort of a fan edit, but he's absolutely restored the thing. I have it. I actually fun. have copies. I have a wonderful yeah. fan who has gotten me the copies of the it's the despecialized edition of uh, yep. of the first three. Oh, it's that feels so. That's good. What, yeah, that's wonderful for me because I look. I, I can go. Okay, this is what I saw. That's you know? what I saw, and that was for me because when I when I first saw Star Wars, I saw it on VHS. It was pre special editions. Um, right. I did not. I only saw the theatrical uh, cuts. Uh, that was my original Star Wars. So, oh, cool! Yeah, cool. that was, and that was. It, 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 I'm in a very weird spot for my age because it's unusual that someone my age falls into that. I'm just, I'm right. just on that cusp where I saw Star Wars at home on VHS. 
before the special editions came out and I saw that and I was ex exposed to the original trilogy just before the prequels came out. So a lot of people right. are considered in my generation, a lot of my peers, uh, for example, the prequels were their first exposure to Star Wars and I don't have anything in common with them because um, yeah. yes, I was young when I saw the prequels and there was a, there was a level of forgiveness uh, at seeing those through a child's eye, but uh, it, I, I feel a greater kinship to people who saw the originals in theaters or saw them growing yeah, up. Yeah, that's too. Yeah. That's, yes, because that was my, that was Star Wars for me. That's what Star Wars means yeah, to me. Yeah, um, I grew up with the originals unedited. My parents had the VHSs, yeah, the OG cool. VHSs before anything was edited, the original releases, so that's what I grew up with. Yeah. 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 No, it's it was like I say for me it was really weird because what you know what happened after Star Wars is you had a whole bunch of science fiction that came along yeah. Yeah. and there wasn't much before that and I will never forget twelve years old I'm walking out of there with my best friend and we're both just stunned you know and and he turns to me and he says wow that was better than Logan's Run <laughs> <laughs> that was all you had to compare it against that was the wow. last decent science fiction movie you know oh kelly did you ever see logan's run i haven't seen it but really? i know exactly oh, okay. what he's talking oh, about oh man i um i i took a i took a, a film class in college about the movie it was a movie image history of the 1970s and every week we had to go watch three movies from the 1970s and because of my love of star wars logan's run was one that i chose and oh man it's so funny because yes i mean that was sci-fi of the era yeah, on a totally yeah. different. I'm totally unrelated. No, did you ever see the movie The Island? Oh my gosh, I really love that movie. That's okay. I recognize it's probably not the greatest movie I've ever made, but I love that movie. If you like that movie, you'd really love you'd really love Logan. Okay, good. Because The Island was like there was it was a brat. It was a Leonardo DiCaprio movie. No, uh, you McGregor, McGregor and uh, Scarlett Johansson. Okay, okay, you McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. It was a with um. It was one of the last movies that um. Oh gosh, oh he was in Green Mile. Was Tom Hanks? No idea. Michael, <laughs> um, somebody, the big black guy, the big black uh, guy named Michael. Um, the yeah, that main character. I don't remember his yeah. name either. No, I know who you're talking. I know who you're talking. Don't about. worry, that's what IMDb yeah. is for. Uh, Stand by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Michael Clark Duncan. For. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you liked the island though you would like it was one of the last really movies like, he was in um that definitely stole the plot from logan's run um, oh yeah logan's run the only thing you have to worry about in older science fiction movies like that is the tech dance. yeah and and you kind of have to forgive it oh because, yeah thank but, you internet you were helping me out yes but michael tibble though michael tibble michael tibble tibble um, no, no, not Tibble. Not no. Um, fuck. Did he play Tibble? He played Tibble. Oh played Tibble. yes, Michael My York. Michael York. Michael, Michael York. York. Yes. He played Tibble in the uh, <laughs> Zeffirelli. Zeffirelli. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Michael York in Logan's Run. Yes. Oh man. Yes. Uh no. And he's that's, so young. <laughs> oh, he is, and his voice. That voice. Oh my god. He does have a great wow. like. He just like. He's just got a great, like, it resonates out of, like, he, not even his direct chin, but, like, it resonates out of, like, right, right here. Right there. Like, Michael right York. There. Michael York. Even yeah. in Austin Powers, like, so resonates, loud. like, right here. Michael, it's so Michael loud. York. It's like, yeah, it's Michael York. Michael York. Um, oh. I tell you what I could never get out of my about 11-year-old mind at that time. Uh-huh. What, Jessica's costume? Ah. Uh. <laughs> the, the one that uh, was totally slid down the side? Mm. Um, and that's something you just don't get out of your head when you're that age. As a male, oh no, you see that point. and go, you know. <laughs> I, I hate to be sexist, but hey, uh, it's that's not at all. No, it's just what it's that's, and that's how that was marketed. It was marketed to appeal to your young male sensibilities. Well, um, Logan's Run was a little more adult movie, but Star it was Wars, very adult. yeah, absolutely yeah. aimed straight at us, you know, at that age. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, uh, like I say, it's, it's one of those deals where, you know, when I went into the prequel trilogy, you know, you go in with a certain level of expectation, right? And mm. I went in there and, well, Jar Jar. You know? <laughs> and actually, one of my biggest problems with those films is really the two things. There is so much going on on the screen at any given time yeah. that you don't really know what the hell you're supposed to be looking at. And the other thing was, I don't think Anakin's character was developed quite the way it should have been. You know, he was never mm -hmm. a nice guy. 
he was always kind of a jerk. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. No, I, just, I just read this really great, and that you, you dovetailed right into the uh, the question, which of course we're asking everyone who calls in what their feelings are on the prequels. So, yeah, um, I, I mean, the weird yeah. thing is, I don't like the prequels very much, mm. but the weird thing is, the current trilogy makes them look good. It does, though. <laughs> It's it's like you know I, 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 it's it's like what what happened on basically the first two not so much the third but the first two everybody went okay okay the, that one was not so good but the next one will be fine and, and that one wasn't so good well the next one will be fine and got it. now you look back from the current trilogy really, after walking mm -hmm. out of the Last Jedi and you just go well those were a lot better <laughs> right yeah no for sure for absolute sure absolutely no it's yeah that makes sense actually. And then with the prequels, you kind of had that. You kind of had like, all right, well, we, we got rid of Jar Jar, and then we got Hayden Christensen. All right, well, we got Ewan McGregor in a deeper, you know, Obi-Wan role, so we can live with that. Oh, yeah. And, and then you're like, okay, well, what's next? And the Revenge of the Sith was largely okay. And you're like, okay, I can live with this. We, we yeah. got there. We got there. I can live with this. I'm not overjoyed. Yeah. I'm not over the moon, but I can live with this. I'm happy with what yeah. we got where we got. Um, and I, I really do think there's there's a big element of, of that that where, where you – at the end of the day, there's George Lucas's canon, you know, yeah. and there's, for me, it's always been an, 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 uh, an issue of concept versus execution. I don't have a yes. problem with the that concept. Was, that was the biggest, that was the, actually, that was the only issue. Yeah. That's, for me, that was the, the only, only issue, issue the with, my pre, with, yeah. with the prequels. That's for me, like, when you look at Quentin Tarantino as a director, for me, Tarantino's best film by far is Reservoir Dogs. He was nobody. He had everything to prove. Yeah. He had to prove it in order to get that 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 tabula rasa to just go and play. And he did it. He was given Reservoir Dogs. He he played within the rules enough that he gave. He produced something that was edgy enough that it made people feel, but it was mainstream enough that people could digest it. And and right. then. I mean, Pulp Fiction was a great follow-up in a way, but but at the same time, there were moments of that that were self-indulgent. Kill Bill has incredible moments, but as a whole, as a two-part piece, is wildly self-indulgent. Oh um, my gosh, yes. And I think that's, yeah. for me, is the prequels became Lucas's self-indulgence. Oh, um, yes. Yes, and, yes very much so, yeah. And instead of Disney buying it out and correcting those mistakes... Disney bought it out and became Disney self-indulgent. Oh God, yeah, and and you know you, they, you can't. I think talk Disney about it tried to talking about Kathleen Kennedy. I agree. Know. Yeah, I think. Sorry. No, you you called in for this, so finish your thought, and then oh, I'll uh, then I'll well, add mine. I'm saying you can't talk about those without thinking about Kathleen Kennedy, and and you know you, when you hear that she didn't have a plan, you know for the for the. The three movies, yeah. And you're just like, what? Well, this, yeah. You know, why did you not have a plan? You freaking moron! You and know, this is, this I mean, is, it's a yeah. trilogy. You know? Absolutely, this is my huge problem with Kathleen Kennedy in the first place. Is 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 yes? Why would you contract a trilogy and not have at least a fucking outline yeah. for the trilogy? I mean, I can, I, you know, you say, okay, well, these events have to happen in this movie. Right. These events have to happen in this movie. These have to happen. Now, you give it off to some director, yeah. writer, you say, you write them how you want them. But these things have to happen. But those have to exactly. Now, the other problem for me is that is that this is a whole problem where, where Kathleen Kennedy has become this figurehead, this person. Kathleen Kennedy is a fucking executive producer. Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy is supposed to be no more than the bankroll, the PR campaign, and, she's and right. signing off on the new direction. That is fucking it. She is a she is an executive producer. She is not supposed to be a fucking creative consultant. And what's made and what's yeah. what's been so frustrating for me as somebody that's seen the name Kathleen Kennedy in front of so many films for so long and been like, oh, Kathleen Kennedy. Is that she's she has been the bankroll and before she was executive been the been a producer with yeah. as someone with creative creative input um, in in things for in so many films that I've enjoyed that have had edge right. and have had uh, have had intelligent creative input for in so many films for so long before this to just to just suddenly be like. Bleh! 
She yeah. got that revision. She, she that, got cause it. that's all it's done. It's like that didn't mean anything and was stupid. Cause that's <laughs> what it's done now. Yeah. That's and what that's, it is. And that's the whole thing. Is that she's she's just gripping on the point of giving a shit about the product, and it's all about her message. Oh well, now I'm this amazing uh, superstar. Yeah. I run Lucas Films. What's my message? And it's so annoying because she really does stuff that, you know, kind of pushes the fans away. I mean, it's like almost actively saying, frack you to the fans. You yes. Know? Oh, 100% and, saying frack you to the fans. Yeah. You listen to her and you just, after you see the films and you listen to her whine on about, I'm sorry, female stuff. And I'm like, you moron. Have you not Female seen the original trilogy? Female stuff doesn't connect with everybody. Yeah, freaking sure. idiot, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, I, okay, I, I do a, a review show. That's my thing, Tales uh-huh. from the Wild. So don't want to be, don't want to be self-serving. No, um, but self-serving. I, I, I hey, have reviewed a whole bunch of stuff that's you pay money, be self-serving. Like, um, you know, okay, Flash Gordon serials, right? I've reviewed those. And, you, you get, you know, Dale Arden, right, who is an absolute wallflower, doesn't do anything, you know, except get saved all the time, right? She's always doing stupid stuff that gets her. And you're like, okay, if that was the character we were seeing in the original trilogy and Kathleen characters and Kathleen was saying, we need somebody stronger than that, I'll be okay, yeah. But no, Leia is nothing like that. You know, no, because Leia says, is just a good character who happens to have a vagina. Yeah, exactly. She's the one that comes in and says, you guys had came in again with no plan. What are you, idiots? You know, and takes over. I mean, exactly. it's just like, it, why did you think that needed to be fixed? Exactly. Right? You know, uh, it was fine. It was fine. And I know you've said the same thing on your show, Jesse. Yeah, I've, seen, I've watched you long enough to have <laughs> seen you scream about that. But it's um, it's right. certainly true. And, it's and so she does true. It's it so true. It pisses off the fans. That's, I mean, to me, that's just, it's, it's, it's degrading to, uh, Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia to try to act like what you're doing in, with this feminist agenda is so novel. When the reality is not only are you, are you, is it not novel, but it's also bad. Like, it's not even good, uh, feminism. Yeah, so. but, I, you know, I agree. It's like, and as you've said before, I mean, Ray is just, She's perfect at everything. Never has to learn anything, you know. Yes. And it's just like, well, she okay. Was... I get you. I get you wanting to, you know, show strong female characters, but can they not have also, you know, a learning curve and downfalls of things, you know? Just... Well, she was set up with. She was set up with all this stuff that we were. She was set up with all this stuff that we in Force Awakens that we were kind of teased to believe that we might maybe be shown how she might have learned it in Last Jedi, but then Ryan Johnson went, like I said, like I said, pulled a fucking Stephen Moffat and just went, no, she just knows it, fuck off, doesn't matter, she has it, and she's gonna follow all the men that are presented before her. Ryan Johnson went dirt and dirt and made her chase after men and was like, this is feminism, like, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Again, no, no uh, disagreement with you there. I, it's it's one of those things, you know. And, and as somebody who grew up with the original trilogy, I mean, you know, really young at the time, I, and I don't want to make a big deal out of that. You guys are, you know, great fans and everything. Yeah, there isn't that much difference between us in that respect. But as somebody who grew up with that, you know, you come in with an expectation. And mm-hmm. what you get is Kathleen Kennedy screaming at you about how you need to like this movie because it's got strong women in it. And I'm like, no. It don't, don't have, have strong women in it, though. Well, I, yeah, but I mean, that's what she's screaming at exactly. you all the time. Like, and I was immediately thrown by that um, in the whole VR campaign leading up to The Force Awakens, where I've got someone screaming, you're supposed to like this movie. And I, I did videos about this before the movie even came out. Where they're like, all right, um, you're supposed to like this because it's a black guy. You're supposed to like this because it's a woman. You're supposed right. to like this because uh, there you go. And I was like, yeah, well, there was a black guy and a woman in the originals, too. What do you yeah, want? Right. Make me a good movie. Yeah, that's the, thing. <laughs> the difference is movie. those were good films. Exactly. And I actually liked Force Awakens. I thought it. Sh- I did not. No, I know you did not. I thought Force Awakens was like, was not a. 
I thought Force Awakens was an okay film, but I thought it was a film that like was more a setup to a trilogy as opposed to the first film in a trilogy. It was a shitty and I, remake. And I said to Jesse, I was like, I bet we're gonna see episode uh, episode seven, eight, nine, ten instead of se- episode seven, eight, nine. Episode seven left me feeling. I, I'm a, I'm with Jesse about it. I I I. I yeah. I, I That's fine. But then with episode money. eight, I was like, this is trash. This is ridiculous. I, I, what I has happened? Was... Oh, wait, how did you this feel? is awful. Wait, how did you feel coming out of- This is not of... a Star Wars how did you... film. How did you feel coming out of uh, episode seven? Well, I thought it was passable. You know, it, it, it took the bad taste out of my mouth that I had for the prequel trilogy at the time. Wow. And, and it was passable. But it was also damn near a beat for beat remake of um, A New Hope. I mean, you know, substituting some different characters. Yeah. And I really, really hated what they did with um, Leia and Han. Uh, I didn't like, you know, killing them off to begin with, but I also they didn't like. They should never have broken them up. I will agree with that. Yeah. They shouldn't you have broken them up. should never have broken them up. Why you know, did they break up? Imagine. Some bullshit reason. They were OTP, one through pairing. Those OTPs don't break up once they're together. Yeah. Unless it's like a Doctor Who thing. Yet another Doctor Who bearing where, like, they literally have to, like, cross dimensions for some reason to save the world. You right. don't break up OTPs. I, well, like I say, I, you know, as, a, as somebody who grew up with it, and as I got older, and I had kids who, by the way, are about your age, and, uh, you know, you, you like, see, what they did with Luke in the second one, if they hadn't screwed him over the way they did, that's how I wanted to see Luke. You know, this wise Jedi master this guy who had had all this time i wouldn't have done it that way you know i would have had him had a school full of jedi and all that yeah. but he's the guy i wanted to see as the wise jedi master and they screwed him up in the, you know and in, in, uh, uh the second one and i can say the first one was just a beat for beat remake i didn't like what they did with han at all i i you know again it's just the sort of deal where as somebody who was growing up and not his age he's a good 20 years older than i am but if somebody was growing up with this, you just wanted to imagine him as, okay, eventually Han got a little old for this old running around stuff, and he kind of settled down. Maybe he turned into more like a Lando Calrissian or something, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of running something and, you know, being part of the government or something yeah. like that. And, and it was just, oh, okay, we broke up, and our son turned into a jerk. You know, <laughs> just like, geez, did you have to, you know? <laughs> It's not where I wanted to see him go at all. Not at all. No, I, I was very disappointed. I felt like they regressed him to kind of yeah. where he was at the beginning of the uh, Yeah, like, and that's generally not how people grow. People don't... No. Especially he if they're with nice somebody story. that's going to keep watering them, they're not going to shrink back down to what they were. And they've grown so much in this film, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had a nice story arc in the original trilogy, right? He went from being this kind of cynical smuggler into somebody who was more trusting and was in love with Leia and all that. And you wanted to see them live happily ever after. I mean, just his arc in the first film alone, where he finally comes back, is like, yeah. you really seem like you could need some help. You seem like you need a little help, kid. Go get yeah. him. Ah, oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> and then, boom, you know, blown away and killed in a way that, I, I mean, I understand the guy didn't want to play the character anymore. But you know how to do the death like that. But yeah, yeah, at least like... I mean, it was just like I understand he's like, yeah, I'll come back, but kill me. Like, at least give him a death that, that is worthy of Han Solo, not just like a yeah. Death. Have him go out saving the day, you know, not just stabbed in the in the chest by his son for reasons. I, I don't know stupid I mean, ass reasons. I, I, that that whole scene just never made any sense to me. I mean, I why? Agree. But yeah, I, I you know it's the same thing with like Akbar. And, and uh, you know the last Jedi. Actually, Why did you he wanted. Just have yeah, suck Harris, it out one, you wanted like Harrison that? Ford wanted a Solo killed in Empire yeah. when he went yeah. into the. Uh, I'm I, I'm answering uh, Mal Malzaris, who uh, he wanted a Solo killed in Empire when he went into the Carbonite. He didn't yeah. even want him back for Return yeah. of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah, and then they teased that he might die in Jedi too, with one line or two, mm-hmm. and he wanted him dead there too, <laughs> but. That's well, why I, I want to sit down and have a conversation with Harrison Ford. Doing? Like, why, like, I, I, no judgment. Just like, why did you hate Han Solo so much? I'm just curious. Like, why did you yeah. want to kill him so badly? I have seen that. You know, you've seen that a couple of times with actors who have been in really iconic 
And yet he's coming back to play indie for the fifth time. Like, I'm just curious. Yeah. It's not a judgment thing. I'm just, I'm just desperately curious, human to human. Why? Um, yeah. Um, I, I don't know why they did that last Indiana Jones movie either. It, I'm, I'm, you know. uh, that's part of why I'm excited for Indy 5, because I hear, because, like, because I, I want Indy 5 to apologize for Indy 4. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need um, an apology film. Yeah. 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 It would be nice. I don't know. The guy is, I mean, he's still running around. He seems to be in good shape. But they, I guess when, if, if, I assume you've like seen the Plinket reviews, right? And um, he kind of nails it in that one. Oh, you haven't seen the Blinkit reviews? No, oh my no. God, go watch the Blinkit reviews. All Start right. with the Star Trek ones and go all the way through. He is freaking amazing. He is amazing, his reviews are. Dead on accurate from my perspective. But he kind of hit the nail on the head when he reviewed that film, I think. And he, and he basically said, look, the reason that we went to see Indiana Jones was not the character of Indiana Jones per se. It was what he was doing as a character. You know, running around and doing his action bits and all that it wasn't that we really cared about him per se um i mean we liked the guy but when you make him old like that he starts to lose that appeal it's like the reason they change james bond all the time the actors because after a while they start to get old and you go hey okay we get someone younger for this um i mean it's yeah. not so much the character exactly yeah. it's what they do but the uh, last one, me, I'm just for like. For me, it is oh, indie. For me, Why? for me personally, it's indie himself. Is it? I'm gonna go to okay. the bathroom. I'll be right back. Tell you all this stuff. I'm gonna hold okay. down the fort. I okay. liked I'm indie himself. Down. Like I would have liked, I would have liked Crystal Skull much better if Shia LaBeouf had nothing to fucking do with it. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure he won't have anything to do with the next one. He won't. And Frank I Marshall is coming back, and Steven Spielberg is directing again. And Frank Marshall yeah. didn't have anything to do with Crystal Skull. Ah, well, it, it'd probably be better. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, Shia LaBeouf, I think, has crazied himself out of the industry, near as I can tell. So, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be doing a lot more work. So. Oh is, darn. Uh, in general, I mean, I've seen the guy. When I saw the guy in Even Stevens, I thought he was a pretty decent actor. And and then he just crazed himself out of the industry. When you crazy, I, you crazy. Sometimes there's nothing for it but the fact that you crazy, you know? Yeah, well, you know. Yeah, but he won't be around, and that's okay with me. You know, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Um, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't really a fan of that character particularly, but then I wasn't a fan of much of anything that went on in that movie. Yeah, it's just like what? Uh, what? I Indiana just think it's an aliens. Um, I, I don't see, think so. No. I think I actually think that the the failure of that movie was was the uh, the decision to go. Like I think the failure of that particular film was actually the the aliens thing because yeah. if you if you notice, like people think that the weakest of the original trilogy was um, Temple of Doom. Uh, and the strong, two strongest were Raiders and uh, Raiders and Last Crusade, and both of them dealt with like Judeo-Christian mythology, right? Uh, yeah. And and Temple of Doom did not, and that's not because like most Americans are Christian. It was just that it was just uh, it's just that the peop the screenplays had the like had the most depth to yeah. them, and I don't think it's because of the Judeo-Christian mythology. I just think it's it's because like the screenplays took the most time and i with bef like with their with the chosen mythology and i think that temple both temple of doom and crystal skull kind of rushed through their chosen mythologies and that's yeah. why their that's why their films were weaker overall yeah and, and the thing about the thing about um, uh, you know the, uh, the the third indiana jones film was that it was Christian mythology, but you're also dealing with something that is ancient. You know, exactly. you're dealing with, the, you know, the the, the, uh, the Holy Grail, you know, something that has a really long history. Everybody's been looking for the Holy Grail. It, yeah, exactly. It has a really long history. It has a really long history that has, uh, the Holy Grail in particular has a really long history that has, um, it has a history that appears in several different mythologies, not just the Judeo-Christian right. mythologies. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm an atheist, and I you look at. I don't mean to be down on Christians particularly, but you look at say uh, whatever you like. Things. You're entitled you to believe whatever you things. believe. 
you can look at certain things in history and you can see where they recur in religions throughout many thousands of years. And you're absolutely right that, you know, that that particular mythology, while it's huge and, you know, uh, Judeo-Christian, it's still something that dates way, way back before that. Um, you know, it's lots of things get picked up and adapted by various religions uh, over time. And, you know, it's it's just one of those things. And like I say, it has this long, long history. You know, you go back to, you know, medieval times and things like that with the Knights of the Round Table. And so it has this romance associated with it. And I, like I say, I think for me, that third one probably worked the best. Although, as somebody who saw those again as a as a teenager... You know, you walk in and you see Indiana Jones and that first shot, you know, in Raiders about him from the back, just totally iconic. If you've seen that, you know, for the very first time, the big screen is mm. like, wow, that's cool. You yeah. know, that and I'll tell you something else real quick about uh, big screens and theaters like that. I will never the forget, uh, you know, Return of the Jedi is not my favorite movie. But Hold on, hold, pause, pause. I, I'm sorry? Kelly thinks the hat that Indiana Jones wears is a fedora. Yeah, it is. I, I, that, on my, on my show, that, I wear it. How that Indiana Jones wears. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fedora. A fedora? Brown fedora? I, I have one that I wear on my show, yeah. On you purpose. think it's a, a fedora? Yeah. It is a mm-hmm. wider brim. It is a much wider brim than a fedora. No, fedoras have a pretty wide brim. Um, that's that's a fedora, yeah. I, I, hold on. Yeah, Are go you? ahead and look. It's a fedora. Okay. I picked, the one, I picked up the one that I have, believe it or not, at truck stop between uh des moines and uh chicago <laughs> so but yeah it's a brown fedora no, yeah the fedoras. fedoras that the fedoras that uh are modern have very narrow brims but fedoras mm-hmm. from the 1930s have much wider yeah. brims than the nowadays. 30s to the 50s or so yeah okay i those all everything i'm seeing from image search fedora has a much narrower brim except that one um, and that that's one, still not Indiana and Jones, that right? one, that's not Indiana Jones. That, that one is. That, that one, one is. I don't know what that is. I that, don't know what that, that is. That, that one, one is not. That, that one is. is. Oh this hell is yeah, not. that one is. Indiana Jones. Okay, look at t- Fedora nineteen thirty. Indiana Jones hat. It's a fedora. <laughs> mm. I'm pretty certain it's a fedora. It it's was a, a common hat in the nineteen thirties. Type in fedora nineteen thirties. All right. Apparently. Oh, look. Transparent background. Fedora. Fedora 1930s. All right, you guys and your fedoras. That none of these things look like Indiana Jones has. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They all have... Up- That's the whole point of a fedora, though. Fedoras have all have upturned brims, and the Indiana Jones hat does not have an upturned brim. That's the, um. it's, not, it's, not the, it's not the size. It's the brim. Fedoras turn up at the end of the brim. The Indiana Jones hat does not have an upturned brim. It's a fedora. It's not a fedora. Jesse. I'm telling you, it's a fedora. How? Okay, okay. It does not have an upturned brim. Fedoras have upturned brims, yes? No. No. Yes. No. All of those have... Look at that. Look at fucking... uh, what is that? That's still not an Indiana Jones hat. That's a Jones fedora. Hat. Yes, it is. It's not an Indiana Jones hat. Yes, it no, is. No, it's absolutely not an Indiana Jones hat. Yes, it is. It's a brim. It is not the right shape. It is an yes, absolute, it is. It is a pointed crest on the front of it. And the Indiana Jones Which Indiana brim? Jones has. has. Yes, it false. does. Absolutely false. No. None of these things look like an Indiana Jones hat. It's Humphrey Bogart fucking wears a 1930s fedora. Yes, he does, and that does not look like Indiana Jones's hat. Yes, it Humphrey does. Humphrey Bogart looks sexy as fuck in a fedora in a 1930s fedora, but that does not look like the hat that Indiana Jones wears. Official Indiana Jones fedora, 2.5 inch okay. brim. Wolf I hat. made an Indiana Jones styled fedora. Great. I made an, a Han Solo styled backpack. That doesn't mean that Han Solo <laughs> wore a backpack that looked like that. I have a Han Solo styled. Uh, a baseball cap. That doesn't mean that Han Solo wore that cap. Indiana Jones wore a fedora. I he did not. Yes, he did. He I, did I not. I think I'm having to agree with the vast majority of the people in the chat. It's a fedora. I didn't see the chat. What does the chat say? They're all saying it's a fedora. 1930s fedora, wide brimmed. Uh, NGL uh, arm devil says. Uh, I can't believe that you're not listening to your friend that has a fedora. history of studying costumes and making costumes. 
Uh, it's Fedora. <laughs> My God, it's Fedora. <laughs> well, hey, the butler, if you're saying where Fedora Day is like, look at me, I'm a douche, you wouldn't want to watch my show. I don't, none of these <laughs> things look like a fedora. Except day. there's one. There's look, there's him wearing a fedora. That doesn't look like a fedora. That does not look like a fedora. That that's like yes, a that's him of that's him. That's a fedora. That's him wearing the fedora. It's a fedora, 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 fedora. Fine. Fedora. It's a fedora that makes you fuckers happy. <laughs> no, it does it's not Fucking a fedora, fedora because it makes us happy. It's it a is. Fedora. It's only a fedora because it's a fedora happy. because you know what? It's a fedora. You know what? I will give. Ah! <laughs> don't, don't die. I have a lot of things here. I don't. I apparently don't just live here on my own anymore. People's things are here. All right, that's not a fedora. No, it's not. But I'll give a thousand bucks to whoever can name this hat for me. What is this hat? Oh God, that's what some is... kind of uh, cowboy hat. Uh huh. Uh, it is it, it, correct. My, my it is. My grandparents are ranchers. It is some kind um, of cowboy hat. That's a good story. You see that stuff around. around. I don't know precisely what it is, but in rural areas, not far from here, you see that stuff around. We don't sure. wear that in town. Fair but, enough. But what type of hat is this? I used to, I used I to live in a rural area. I used to ride horses in your rural area. I used to keep trail rides I, out here in a rural area. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been out to do any of that. My grandparents were uh, oh. ran, cattle ranchers, but my uh, dad got out of that business and became a psychologist, so I haven't. I haven't been out there in a long time. Well, that's fair. But, but I do go out. I, I, I wear my Tilly hat. But we do still have some. Ooh, we got, okay. Cute. Very there. cute. Very <laughs> it's a hat. Hat is a hat. It's a hat. I like outlaw Kate, hat. I like Caitlin Alba. I've got an outlaw <laughs> hat. It's Jesse's hat. Outlaw hat. I got two. Outlaw, outlaw hat. hat. Could be. Yeah. I don't it's know. definitely my outlaw uh, hat. My, my Tilly hat does have a uh, thing hanging down the back. So. Oh, yeah. I got one, too. You saw. You see. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Saw it. Yeah, I've got something like that, except it's made out of paracord. Mine's made so. out of leather because a hat. Um, I bought it at a at a place that sells hats for hats. Yes, not for functionality. Paracord. That's a pretty functional hat. Uh, well, nobody knows. Braid built in. Nobody knows what this. Nobody's getting my thousand dollars because nobody knows what this hat is. I it's a sexy specific. hat, says Caitlin Alba. I, it is a sexy hat. Thank you, Caitlin Alba. It is a bad motherfucker. It is all those. It is all those things. But in point of fact. This is all right. Bets are closed. The betting drawer, the betting door is closed. Um, this is a tassie crusher. Ah, okay. That is a, it's a type of lady cowboy cowgirl hat per se. Okay. It is an official. Hey, you got me on that one. I, you know, you, you sometimes see those around in rural areas, uh, not too far from here. But again, it's uh, it's not if something you, you see uh, in the city at all. So. No. Nope. Well, I used to live in a very rural area, but if you look yourself up, tassie crusher. I would assume that on the image search you could find it, and I would assume correctly. Here's my Tassie Crusher. Cool. Anyway, it's a it's a ladies style cowgirl rodeo hat, and uh, it's mine. I also have an Australian Outback hat, which I would wear yeah. in Australia. But you gonna wear that when you go to Australia? I would hope so, except that I don't have it here with me, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it to me. I'm gonna get my mom to send it to me before that. Uh, it lives right. my child at home. It does live my child. Uh, Gotcha. Anyway, that's my tassie question. Yeah, so let's see. We've hit Star Wars. We've hit Indiana Jones. There's always Star Trek. How many Ds are in Indiana Jones? I-N-D-I-N-A-D. Two? One. There's about no. 20. Dun 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 I am a guy with a very weird sense of taste in music. Leroic is here I'm too. I guess. Sorry. Let him get, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No, keep I was saying like, Star Wars got me absolutely hooked, uh, and I've been listening to soundtracks. Weird Al Yankovic and ah. uh, about 2004 Shania Twain. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I should. Good. I'll get you good. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm apparently Shania Twain's sole heterosexual male unattached fan. Um, I went to see her in uh, Des Moines. Uh, I don't know. The, the venue was, I guess, 
several thousand at least. And I'm the only guy who's <laughs> not with a woman. <laughs> oh, and, man. Okay, I'll tell you my Shania Twain story. So I go, I go to see her, right? And I get the seats that are right behind the ones that are, um, the, you know, the people who are paying crap tons of money and get a photo op with her and stuff like that. And I'm right behind them. And I'm on an aisle seat, and she comes out and high fives me on the way. And I haven't really washed my left hand since. So it's only been three years. <laughs> oh, you're I'm good then. You're good until at least for at least two more years. Right. I'm gonna let it all hang out. Wanna make some noise? Really raise my voice? Yeah, I wanna scream and shout. The Although mine is, uh, I can actually do. Um, in your heart, because I can hit down low just Ooh. enough to cover that. I yes. won't do it because it would probably be embarrassing. But I can um, hit down low. I actually do that for vocal warm ups for my show. So, uh, but no, I got those, and I have one. Uh, I uh, uh, yeah, I'm not trying to push it. I sometimes play six degrees of Star Trek on my show because you can uh, often do that. Nice. I got a one degree of Star Trek, believe it or not. Way back in the ancient mists of time. <laughs> There was a uh, international bulletin board system called FidoNet, and people from Next Gen used to lurk there. So mm -hmm. one day, about middle of the third season or beginning of the third season, which was where they really hit their stride in Next Gen, you know, they started some really good shows. And I said the words in that I typed out, "I think that this is the finest season of Star Trek ever produced." So okay, that same time I'm I'm, I'm I was a courier. I was going between Chicago and Toronto two or three times a week. So I'm out there in Toronto, and it's late at night, and I have CBC on on the radio. And they're interviewing Patrick Stewart, and I'm listening to it. And he says, some people are saying that this is the finest season of Star Trek ever produced. And I damn near went off the road. You know, I'm hearing my words coming out of Patrick, Sir Patrick Stewart's That's mouth. That's amazing. And I just about, you know, I'm like, <laughs> and I, like I said, damn near went off the road. Um, it was just amazing. Uh, you know, hearing that, it was like, okay, all right, yeah, they actually do lurk. You know, I was just amazed. <clears throat> so I have my one degree of Star Trek. Wow, that's amazing. That's a <laughs> it's not the amazing. only thing I have, but you know, hey. looking as far as I do, I have one other one on Star Trek that's kind of funny. Oh. Um. Michael Dorn was uh, at a con in uh, Chicago land, and I uh, went to see him. And at that time, even, I don't know, backstory long long time ago in a galaxy far far away i Yay. started out an actor huh. and um, realized when i got to chicago i really didn't have what it takes to do that but i went i did have headshots so i go to michael dorn and he's been signing all of these pictures of him all day long and i hand him my headshot to sign and he says what do you want to do want me to do you want me to take this back with me and i said no i just figured you were huh. probably getting tired of seeing your own face and i had him sign my headshot and went away with it so, wow! I don't know if he'd remember that. I doubt it. He's only signed four billion types of you know autographs over the years. Well, but, you know, thought that was a good one. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty fucking sweet. But no, I'm, I remember Star Trek when it first aired on NBC. I'm just wow. old enough, just barely old enough for that. And and it's weird because you know my kids are about your age and I cannot get them to watch the original series. Oh. And I get it. I told now I, I figured it out not long ago. They are as far removed from the original series in time oh. as when I was their age. I was removed from the um, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon serials. Oh wow! Buck Rogers in oh, the twenty fourth century. century. Duck Dodgers in no, no, the twenty fourth and a half century. Half century. I'm talking about the 1930s serials. Oh, I was yeah. In, yeah. That's, I mean, to me, they looked fake. So I get it. My kids, the original series looks fake. You know, and I get it. It's like, oh, yeah, it looks fake. Which doesn't movies. mean I like Discovery. I hate it, but <laughs> Yeah, how do you feel about Discovery? I'm interested. I'm sorry? How do you feel about Discovery? Um, they've blown the tone, is okay. what they've done. Um, you know, the thing about Star Trek always is that it was a very um, optimistic show. That was the whole point. I mean, it, you know, in the 60s, it was very, very explicit because it was a time when they thought they needed optimism. Mm -hmm. And it's always been optimistic. Now, I don't have any problem with it getting more visual. I mean, I think that's one of the places where Star Trek got stalled 
it was it was at a time it came out in the 1960s at a time when you were still coming out of radio you know people were still used to writing for radio so it was very dialogue heavy not necessarily visual heavy and you know now it's like okay this is a visual medium it's fine to go visual but they've blown the tone on it you know it, it's it's that whole last season i was just like uh, well maybe next season will be good but you know you don't forgive the tone the whole darkness and everything just by one episode at the end saying we are great you know it's like well yeah but you've been making all the wrong decisions all the way through huh. you know? yeah i mean yeah. the whole first thing in first episode i'm like um okay the klingons don't want to be involved with you leave yeah right. <laughs> you know? That's what they would usually do if somebody doesn't want to be involved. True. In that was the whole okay. point of the whole purpose of their of their of their mission objective. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to be around us. Fine. Let us cool. know what you do. Peace Bye -bye. out. We're not going to get. We're not going to interfere. Yeah. Yeah. And and it just sort of went downhill for me from there. The first... I don't have any problem with them doing series long arcs. I don't have any problems with them or, or you know season long arcs or, or breaking things up to be a little more like uh, dramatic structure tends to be today. Mm -hmm. I don't have any real problem with that. Um, and I get, I, I'm not thrilled that the check does not fit with the time period as That's we knew it. But uh, as I say, valid. knowing that we are now as far removed from the original series technologically as I would have been at your age from Buck Rogers. Are you Lloyd Christmas? Lance Gordon in the 1930s. I get it. You, you have to update it. There's nothing, you know, otherwise people won't watch it. You know, the target audience is always going to be people your age. Uh, not me. I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I get that they need to update that text, but they've blown the tone, I think, is the problem. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they'll get it right next uh, next season. I, I'm encouraged by the yeah. um, Comic-Con thing that's out there that shows Captain Pike saying, let's have fun. I'm like, okay, that would be a good tone. <laughs> you know? It's a start. It's a good start. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested. I haven't watched any of it. I've watched some of uh, the Orville, and I've really enjoyed what the Orville has done. Um, oh, I love the Orville. It's incredible. It's it's I, got the it's got the tone of the original series with the with the plot savviness of the next generation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I love I love the Orville. I to me, oh. the Orville is Star Trek. That's yes. Discovery yes. is not, you know. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't watched it. But yeah, it's it's one of those deals yeah. where yeah. you know it's, it's just I, I love Next Gen. You know, yeah. and uh, I, I mean, my, my heart will always be with the original series. Mind um, There's an episode of the original series you may or may not have seen uh, called A Private Little War. And the mm -hmm. reason that that one sticks with me is I think there's a point when you're a small child and having, you know, I don't be an a-hole about it, but having seen my kids growing up, there's a point at which the kid passes from just being self-aware into the awareness of your self-awareness, if that oh. makes sense, oh, yeah. where you can say, hey, wait a minute, I can oh. process things now. Yeah. And that moment for me happened in A Private Little War when I was watching it. I know exactly oh. when it happened. And and so for me, it was like, it was there's a there's a monster that looks totally thick and funny now called the Mugatu. Oh. And when that oh, monster came yeah. out, right then was the moment the light switch turned on for me. I can, I remember it precisely. I can actually get that down to the exact moment and time because I know when that episode was aired. Um, so that's why it'll always stick with me. But I love Next Gen. I, yeah. I thought, like I say, oh, yeah, I said, I thought incredible. the third season Absolutely. when we hit their stride was great. Absolutely. But, so uh, we got a we got a super chat from Laroic himself. Yay, Laroic! Mm. I can't do any drinking myself, as Wilbur oh. Brimley said. I got the diabetes, so mm. I can. There's too much sugar in them. So. You take care of you, man. Um, uh, it's, but this no, has been sorry. Yeah, no, I say this has been delightful. We are going to have to move. Okay. Can carry on. We've got some people cool. in the backlog. This was wonderful. It was so great. We covered Star Wars. We covered Star Trek. I mean, we covered Indiana Jones. Um, this was an absolute pleasure. I have to say. I well, appreciate it. It's been great talking to you guys. It's I, uh, been so good. You know, it's, it's always just useful to know that there are fans out there who've been around for a while, and we love what you're doing, too. So, Well, I'm glad. And I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for giving to the cause. We're really excited to help raise money so that premature babies yeah. have the best shot at life. Um, 
that is super important to us because it's super important to Leroic. And Leroic has just dipped into the live chat, so we are going to get him on awesome. live here soon. Well, I won't take up any more time then and I'll let you guys let me off and go on to somebody else. Oh, thank you so thank much, you, William. William. Thank Stone. you for calling in. Thank you for all of your insight. Thank and you thank for you all for of your, your perspective. Donation. And thank you for your donation, most of all. But but your, pers your perspective, your insight was invaluable. It's so it's wonderful listening to it's, and this has been such a, a treat tonight talking to so many different people of uh, different ages, different birth years, different generations, and having different experiences with Star Wars and with other science fiction uh, trilogies, or, uh, science fiction uh, series that we know and love. So, well, all I can say, in some, just in closing, if you ever get a chance to see Star Wars Episode Four in a Cinemascope theater, sit in the first row, dead center. <laughs> Thank you for that. I will hold that with me. I uh, one of these days we have us in Wiscope and back in Philly, so maybe maybe one of these cool. days I'll get lucky. Yeah, that's cool. The thing shot in scope, so oh, hot damn. All right. Well, thank you so awesome. much, William. Thanks for your donation. Thank Thanks for calling right. in. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. I hope Great you and your too. and your Jackalope have a wonderful evening. Thank you, <laughs> Jackalope. Good night, William. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.